Alright, this is a tutorial for installing ITK. So, first step is to download ITK, so go ahead and just Google ITK, and it should be the first download. And go ahead and get the zip version. And source Forge always takes a second. And while that's going, we're going to go ahead and get CMake. So once again, Google that. Go to the downloads page. And you're going to want to make sure that you get the zip version as opposed to the installer. I don't know, I've tried the installer without any luck, and the zip version seems to work fine, so go ahead and grab that version. And wait for these both to finish. And when that's done, go ahead and we're going to unzip these both. So I'm using 7-zip, you can use whatever you have. And unzip CMake. And to make things easier, so I'm going to make a new location just on the root of my C drive. Uh, the problem is, if you have too long of a path name, it's going to cause a problem with CMake, so I just like to put it in the C drive just to eliminate any conflicts. So make a folder for the source, and a folder for the build output, and then I also just make one for CMake. And then just copy everything into those. Or cut those, rather, so you can just duplicate. copy ITK. So this is the ITK source that we're copying over. Alright, and with that done, uh, we're going to go ahead and open up CMake. So navigate into the bin folder and launch the CMake GUI. And we're going to tell it where the source code is. So go ahead and hit browse for source and click on the source folder. Hit OK and where it's built. So we're going to have the build output go to the build folder we made. Go ahead and hit OK. And now we're going to hit configure. And it's going to ask you what compiler you want to use. So I have Visual Studio installed. So I'm going to go ahead and use that. So finish. Now you're going to want to make sure that Visual Studio is closed when you do this. If it's open, it's going to cause an error. So make sure it's closed before you hit generate. And I'm going to skip this forward because it takes a long time to configure this. It might take half an hour. And when it finishes, uh, you can go ahead and configure this. So I'm going to uncheck build testing. I'm going to leave build examples checked uh, because that's going to be what generates all of the different programs. So right now we're going to do one with a watershed example. So go ahead and keep that enabled if you want them all. It's going to be a big output. It's going to be about 11 gigs, so make sure you have some space. Go ahead and hit configure one more time. And again, this will just take a minute. And when that's done, go ahead and hit generate. Alright, so this is actually going to build the solution file that you're going to need. So now that that's done, go ahead and close CMake and go to your ITK build folder. And in here, you're going to see a solution file. It's the .sln. So I'll open that up. And it takes a minute to get all these packages and everything sorted. Let's see. Once this finishes, you'll see ready in the bottom corner once it's done. So go ahead and right click on the top and hit build solution. And now this is going to take a bit of time as well. Maybe about, I don't know, 20 minutes, half an hour, longer, depending on your computer. Alright, and when you see that the build has succeeded, 
can go into the build, uh, go into the bin debug folder, and these are where all those examples are that we built. Uh, so one of them in here is the watershed filter. So what I'm going to do now is just run an example. So I'm going to just go to Google and find some sort of DICOM image that we can run. Let's see. Find something that looks interesting to segment. Alright. Save this. Actually, I already have it downloaded, so I'm just going to go ahead and grab just one of the images. I'm not really sure which ones these are. Just look back and close. All right, just so I don't have to do relative paths, I'm just going to copy it into here. Now go ahead and open up a command prompt and navigate or CD to that folder. And I'm going to go ahead and run the watershed segmentation one executable. And I'm going to pass in the image that we just brought, uh, the name of an output image. So I'm just making up output. And then we need to specify a few parameters. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and let it run. And when it's finished now, we're going to need an image viewer, so I'm going to open up image J and navigate to that output.tcm and open it up. And you can see this, there's a segmented image. It's not exactly beautiful, probably want to do some refinement of those parameters, uh, but it works. So there you go. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment, and hopefully this works for you. All right, hope that helps.